This is the Oxfo Ox One, a brand new e-bike that's got so many cool features that if you're thinking about getting into e-bikes in the near future, you should definitely stay to find out more. In this video, we'll give it a top speed test, hill climb test, brake test, see how easy it is to fold and unfold, and spoiler alert, it's the easiest and fastest e-bike to fold that I've ever tried. You'll see it go into a car boot and how a really cool mechanism allows it to be pushed along with ease, unlike other unwieldy folding e-bikes that weigh the same as a baby the elephant. This is sleek, light, pretty fast, extremely clever and is allowed on all forms of public transport in London. Not only that, you won't be struggling to get it on there. So let's get it unfolded. Keep that. Yeah. Bring that round. Yeah. Clip that in. That's it. Undo that. Bring that to how I want it. Let's pretend it's there. That's it. Close that. And that's it. That's it. One of the features of the bike is that, like the Askew Natuno reviewed a few weeks back, it has a torque sensor. This is a type of sensor that can actually tell when you're putting an effort to propel the bike. It's clever because it means it's easy to ride extremely slowly without the motor trying to carry you off against your will. I'll share more of my opinions on that torque sensor later on in the video. The bike has four modes, zero power, eco, medium and high. In eco, the seven amp hour removable battery that's contained in the saddle stem should give a lighter rider a range of about 135 kilometers or 83 miles. Wow. Right, on the hill, only in mid, easy. Nice. The other voice in the video is actually the guy who came up with the idea for the bike. I haven't been given this bike, he bought two of them down in his car from Surrey, where Harry Potter lives. So as always, I want to be honest about the bike. Hopefully it won't get awkward since the guy who made the bike is actually going to be riding next to me on busy roads. I also want to take the bike to do the hill climb test, but I'm going to ride there without telling him so when we arrive, he won't be able to stop us doing it. Now we're going to take him to the... Uh the hill climb test, he doesn't know we're going, but we're going to go to Sandy Lane. Do you have a throttle to help us take off? That's nice. This is a prototype. So, he's going to go around all the other YouTubers, see what they think of it. If there's anything they need to improve, you can, because it's a prototype. I don't remember the bike sounding like a cross between a washing machine and a TARDIS when I was riding it. It might be because I had two wireless mics on me. Look at that. There you go. This bike folds up so small, it reminds me of a cartoon I saw, I don't know if it was a dream or if it was real, where Goofy, Disney's Goofy, pulls up to the side of the road in a car and then folds it down and puts it in his pocket. So as we head over to the hill climb, let's take a closer look at the bike. It's a 250 watt, 36 volt folding e-bike intended to be road legal in every country it is released in. It has mechanical disc brakes that worked extremely well. Brakes, ooh, brakes are good. It only has one gear and a very cool tensioner to ensure that the chain is never loose. It has rear non-adjustable suspension, front and rear lights, a kickstand, 16 inch diameter and 1.75 inch thick Kenda tires. The 7 amp hour battery will charge in 3-4 to four hours with the included 4 amp charger. The entire frame is a minuscule 16.5 kilograms and it's made of magnesium alloy which is even lighter than aluminium. Now let's take a look at the magnets that allow Allow you to roll the bike and down secure like that. Oh. oh that way and the magnets go together yeah like that and then hold the brakes yeah. if I want oh can fart Ooh. But you're gonna get like 
A stronger magnet, aren't you? Yeah, stronger one. I did the bike a disservice by folding it on the grass as the uneven surface was pulling the wheels apart. The wheels never separated on flat surfaces. Despite this, I'm told that the production model will have stronger magnets. Now to get to the hill climb test, we had to ride on some pretty busy roads. I would never do this on the two mini bikes I'd previously tried, the DYUS2 and the DYU D3F. Compared to them, the Oxfo felt like I was just riding a normal sized e-bike. I do love those other two bikes, but I do feel a bit silly on them sometimes, especially the smaller DYU S2. Not so the Oxfo, and quite a few people seemed quite impressed with the bikes as we rode past. As we were riding up the hill to the hill climb test, I did let him know that that's where we were going, but he was very happy for us to test it. So test it we did, unfortunately my 360 camera crashed, but luckily we still managed to capture it. I think the battery won't like it. He said he's been testing for two years. Right. Whoop, whoop. It's not stopping there. Okay, it's still going. Hello. Are you okay with me doing this? Yeah. Yeah? Is he gonna... Right, I'm gonna start pedaling. Okay, I'm pedaling. Let the torque sensor kick in. Now the idea is this, I don't want to be putting too much effort in, and at the moment I'm not. So in terms of the throttle only hill climb test, the bike got to the tree, which is better than both DYU bikes and the Avaka R1 from the last video. It did okay, but really came into its own when pedaling because of the way the torque sensor works with you. Obviously I could try harder and go faster, but then I'll be sweating. I don't want to be sweating because I'm going to work. But it does feel pretty strong. I still find it odd that you have to put a little bit of effort in to get the most out of the torque sensor. Not lots of effort, but a little. And uh, we're nearly there. And we're at the top. And that little bit of effort also supplements the motor to make the bike feel faster than it should. Accelerating a little bit faster and having a little bit more top speed. But how much more top speed? He was very coy about the speed when I asked, so I had to test it out for myself. I need to do a top speed at some point. What's the fastest you've ever got it? Uh, here, 15 and yeah. 15 miles per hour, you've never gone yeah. faster than that? Miles per hour. Right, I'm in high still. I'm gonna, let's see if I can lose this guy. Look. Look at this. See if it, oh, the suspension there like it. 31, then I can get faster. 32. So in that very short run, I got about 20 miles per hour fairly easily. Now compare that with the D3F speed test. <laughs> 19! Can't get up at 19! <laughs> <sighs> so to get to 19 miles per hour on the D3F, it did involve some illegal furious pedalling. You can see that compared to the S2, which is one of the smallest e-bikes you can get, it's of a very similar size, but then the Oxfo goes way smaller when folded, whereas the S2 doesn't fold. It is a folding e-bike that folds so small, you can easily get it on any public transport. And according to Public Transport of London, it's allowed on every single public transport they do. And like an e-scooter, which although folds down nice and small, is banned from every public transport they do. The S2 is also hard to carry, but the rolling system that the Oxfo uses is so easy and with the magnesium alloy frame, it's actually lighter too. It is an unfair comparison because due to the technology the Oxfo has, the suspension, the folding, the rolling mechanism, the special frame, a proper computer, proper tyres, it is a lot more expensive. There's currently an Indiegogo campaign running to raise money to get the bike out there and on that campaign it's selling for £1,099. Links to the bike and that campaign 
train are in the description below. The DYU-S2 on the other hand is only £400 but I've always said that the DYU is more of an e-scooter in the shape of a bike. It's not very pedalable but the Oxfo Ox1 definitely is. You can ride it without power or with a low assist level to get a massive range. You cannot do that on the DYU. Oh and you can easily get it into a car boot too. The Oxfo isn't perfect yet. Again it was a prototype model that I rode. The pedals scraped the floor when I cornered so the pedal arms may have to be shortened slightly or maybe just remove the rear suspension. Is it really needed for this type of bike? And I'm still unsure about the torque sensor. They are a bit more expensive than a standard cadence sensor that just detects rotation and not the force of your rotation. Sometimes I just want to ghost pedal with zero effort to get the maximum effect of the motor. However, the throttle, which may be included as an optional extra, would obviously solve that problem. Despite the fact that you'd technically be making the bike illegal if you used it. But what really impressed me about Leo from Oxfo was that he really wanted to learn from all the people who have tested the bike to make sure that the production model will be as good as it can be. Let us know in the comments what you think of the bike and what features you could or couldn't live without. Leo told me that once the production model is ready, he will send one over for a proper review and review it I most certainly will. If you aren't subscribed and don't want to miss that, then make sure you hit the button, it is free. If you've got something for that video, also don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Thanks again to Leo for bringing the bikes down and thank you to you guys for watching until the end. And until next time, ride safe.